index um, that is about giving, looking at the countries of the world. And they were measuring giving in terms of money spent, time volunteered, and offer and helping strangers. And in each of those three categories, the United States scored in the top 10 of each of those categories. And it made the United States number one in generosity among the world. I don't know if that would surprise you or not. Sometimes we're not always portrayed in the media as the most generous, but there's a lot of generosity. And the second statistic, which I found very interesting, was that poor, the poor people give more than the richest people in our country. Which is surprising because you hear some of these, sometimes those who are very wealthy can give huge sums of money to certain causes. But um, actually that, the rate, the percentage of income versus what people gave, it was actually the poorest in our country are the most generous. And where I read that, um, it opened up with this story that there was a man he saw, he was close to a McDonald's, say, he saw someone who was asking for a meal, didn't have any food, and he went in and bought him a hamburger. And they said, now this isn't maybe the most surprising thing you've ever read, but you might be more interested to note that he had only made $9.57 himself that day for him. So he saw somebody else and they even gave to him. And some would say, well, maybe it's because the poor know the poor. Like those who are the poorest also know others who are in their situation and just meet them on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's why they give more. Or someone else said, maybe it's because we know money comes and money goes, and we know how to turn the lights back on. And this is, we know that it is more important to help those in need. So it kind of brings us to our story um, this morning, the story of the widow's might. And we have um, this amazing story where, of course, this widow is uh, pointed out by the Lord. Um, a might, so she gave, this is called the widow's might in some versions, and that was like parts of a penny, actually. It was very small. And it's interesting to note, now I wish I had a drawing for you of the temple, of what it was like, but um, apparently the treasury was in the court of women. Now, I'm not sure, you know, I wish I had, like I said, it would be nice to have a drawing in front of us what the temple might have looked like exactly. But this story, it takes place in, during Holy Week. It is only a few days before the Lord will be arrested. And I saw conflicting accounts. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday. Now, we might remember that on Monday, Jesus entered the temple and overturned the money changers' tables. It was probably the most angry episode of the Lord that we have. And I always thought that was bold to do, but then to return to the next day or the following day to be teaching in the temple, I, you know, I thought that's really bold too. And here he came in, you know, got every got mad at everybody for um, the money changers who were taking advantage of people, and now he's back teaching again. And of course, as um, we find in the story, um, the woman comes with the offering. And what I read was in the temple there were that they believe is like 13 kind of flute-shaped boxes where people could bring their offering. And it was customary for people to state out loud what they were offering. I thought that would make our offertory a little awkward, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so it kind of, you know, really kind of created a culture of showing off you could say. So she comes with her two coins and puts them into the offering plate. Now just as an aside, I, 
know, I was looking up images to see what um, I might put on the cover of the bulletin. And I found some different artwork of the widow. And I'm just wondering, does anyone have a picture in mind of what, what the woman might have looked like? As I found myself just thinking naturally she would have been an older woman, but I also saw pictures of a younger woman. And I thought, I would just, it just, you know, reminded me of assumptions that we make, um, that I was making. We don't really know a lot about her. That's what, we just know that she um, had lost her husband. And what is also important to note when we think about this, what happened, was that when you were widowed in ancient Palestine, not only were you losing your loved one, but you were also extremely dependent on them. And for women, this was their livelihood. So to lose your husband meant that you were now dependent on other relatives being kind and even begging for your food. And it, um, what I read was the original translation of the, the widow. It, it was kind of a name for somebody who had to beg for food. So she was extremely, extremely poor. So she comes, and she offers her money, and Jesus points out what she does. So what do you remember of the story? What, it, what do you take as the lesson? Like, what comes to mind as just being the main lesson of this story? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Well, that it doesn't matter. Total amount. Mm -hmm. It's it matters the motivation. Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. she did that. Right. And what what she really did. Mm -hmm. Right. She gave her all. Um, it, it was more than what others gave, even if it was less financially. It was more. Um, often through time. I mean, many many sermons. I'm sure messages have been given on this and. What has often been the teaching is that this kind of sacrificial giving, that what really matters is if you give enough kind of, that it hurts even, that, um, that it doesn't mean much if you just give a little bit and it never actually affects your day-to-day -day living. But if you give it all, and you know, and it kind of has pointed to Jesus, this kind of sacrificial giving, Jesus gave everything. Well, it's interesting. Because I read many commentaries on the uh, online this week with a differing opinion than that, and they're saying that this isn't about this at all. This kind of giving, sacrificial. Giving. This does not teach how to give. We never hear Jesus saying. He says what she does. 